Hi guys, I Aziz welcome you to Codemaster. With this video, I am starting a brand new series on generics. So let's get to the main point without any twisting. And the main point is, what can you expect from this series? Well, you can expect all the relevant topics of generics which you encounter in your day-to-day -day life. In this series, I will take you from ground level up to the advanced level. And finally, I will make you from zero to hero in generics. So guys, I am super excited to learn about generics and I hope you too. So without wasting any time, let's get into the generics. Alright guys, let's begin this video. So as you know that this is the first video of this series. So in this video, I will explain what is generics, what problem it solves and what are the advantages of generics. So let's start with the first thing that what was the actual problem that we were facing without generics. So let's get into it. So guys here you can see that we have one class and this class is a box class. This class has one property size. We have constructor to initialize the size and we have getter method to get the size of this box. Okay. Now here we have one interface with the name iComparable. This interface defines one method compare to. This method is used to compare two objects. Now this method is taking an instance of box which means this interface is strongly bind to box class. Alright. Now if I come here I can see here that the box class is implementing i comparable interface. Right. So which means we have to give implementation of compare to method. Right. So that is why this class is giving an implementation of compare to method. Okay. As this interface is taking an instance of box, we can compare two boxes using its property size. And this is what we are doing. Now let's see this interface in action. So let's create a new object of box. Give it a name box1 is equal to new box. And the size of this box is like 10. Okay. Let's create one more object of this box and give it a name box2. And let's say the size of this box is 30. Okay. Now let's compare these two box using its size. So let's call system.out.println then write box1 dot compare to. Okay. And give it a box2 object. So box1 class is using the method of interface to compare box1 and box2. Now let's run this program. Now let's run this program. So you will see that the output is minus 20. So what are we doing inside of compare to method? We are subtracting size of this object with the size of the other object. So if the size is smaller, which means the size of box one is smaller than box two. So we are getting the correct result. Now guys, if you look at this comparable interface, there is a one major problem with this interface. And the major problem is this interface is strongly bind with the box class. Now imagine that if I want to use this interface with other classes, then how can I use this interface? Because this interface is binded with the box class, we cannot use this interface with the other classes. Make sense? So for example, let's say I have 10 classes and I want to write an interface to compare all the 10 classes. Then do I need to write 10 interface for all the 10 classes? It should not happen, right? So guys, how can we make this interface such that this interface can be used with all the classes? So guys, this is where the concept of generics comes into picture. So generic allow us to make this interface as generic as possible so that we can use this interface any of the classes. So guys, this is a moment where we should give a big round of applause to generics. Yay. So let's convert this interface into a generic interface. Now how to convert this interface into generic interface using the diamond symbol. So let's put diamond over here. So this is the syntax we use to make any interface or class or method generic. So inside of this diamond symbol, we have to define the type and the type is T. Okay. Now let's use the same T here also and boom, we are done. So now this interface is no more bind to box class. Now it is a generic interface and we can use this interface with any classes. Now let's go to box class. Now here as the interface is generic interface, we have to provide a class to this interface. In case of box class, this interface is going to work with box class, right? So let's go to main class. Let's run the program. You can see that it is working absolutely fine. Now let's try to use this interface with another class. So let's say we have one class bike. 
and this class has one property speed. Here is a constructor to set the speed and here is a get method to get the speed of this mic. Okay. Now let's implement this interface over here. Let's write implements. Let's write the name of interface comparable and use the diamond syntax. Okay. And inside of this diamond syntax, let's define the name of the class. And this time in case of bike, the name of class is bike. Now let's provide the implementation of compare to method. So let's use override method and the override method is compare to. Okay. This time you can see here that this compare to method is working with bike instance. Okay. So let's call this dot max speed minus a dot max speed. So what are we doing here? We are comparing two bikes based on the speed. Okay. Now let's go to main load Java and then let's create a new instance of bike bike be, give it a name bike is equal to new bike and let's say the speed of this bike is 200 okay let's create one more instance let's name it bike one and it let's name it and it's going to be bike two now let's call system dot out dot print ln let's call bike one dot compare to and pass it the instance of bike two bike two let's run the program Okay, the speed of this bike is let's say 150. Let's run the program. Now we will see that the output is 50, which means the speed of bike one is greater than speed of bike two. So guys, this is how we can make a interface, a generic interface so that we can use this interface in other classes also. So basically we are reusing code in both the classes. So we can observe that how cleverly generics has solved our problem. But guys, we are still not yet done. We still have one problem. Let me show you the next problem that we can solve using generics. So here you can see that we have one class printer controller and this printer controller has one method print and this method is responsible for printing the content which is passed to this method, right? So let's create an instance of print controller here. Let's call print controller, print controller is equal to new print controller. All right. Let's call print controller dot print method. Now guys, look here. This print method is asking string, which means we can call this method with string only. Now let's say if I want to use this method with other data type, for example, integers, character or user defined data type, we cannot use this method at all. We can only use this method with strings. Because if we try to use this method with other data type, it will simply throw an compile time error. Now this is again a problem. So if we want to use this method with other data types, so do I need to write multiple methods? If I write multiple method, then this means I am writing a redundant code so many times. So how can we solve this problem? And the solution is generics. So let's again use generic and try to convert this non-generic method into generic one. So let's use the diamond symbol. Okay. Let's put the type over here and in place of a string, let's use T. Now you can see that this class and this method is no more bind with a string class. It is bind with the parameter that we pass here as a generic parameter. Okay. So if you go to main.java, now you can see that I am able to pass integer over here. I am able to pass character over here. And I am also able to pass a string over here as simple as that. So I hope now you understood that how can we make any interface, any class and any method generic so that we can reuse the same code with different types of data. So guys, now if I ask you that what is generic, then your answer should be straightforward that generic is a technique that enables type to be parameters when defining classes, interfaces and method. And this is what we are doing. So here it's a parameter here. It's a parameter. And similarly here, it's a parameter. So we are passing type parameter exactly like we pass normal parameters here also, here also, and here also. So basically type parameters provide a way for you to reuse the same code with different inputs. And this is what we are doing. We are using this method with different types of inputs and we are using the compare to or this interface with different types of inputs. So the question over here is what is the difference between normal parameters and type parameters? Well, the difference is straightforward. 
that the input to this parameter is always a value whereas the input to this parameter is always a type as simple as that so guys by now i hope that you understood that what is generic and what problem it solves so let me recall once again that generic enables types to be parameters when defining classes interfaces and method and what problem it solves it it basically provides a way for you to reuse the same code with different types of data or input so long story short we can make our interfaces methods and classes as generic so that we can reuse the same classes interface and method with other type of data now moving on so guys generic has many benefits over non generic code and i will explain you all the benefits one by one so the first benefit of using generic is improving code clarity let me show you how can we improve the code clarity using generics so let's head over to this class bank and you can see that this bank class has one method and the name of this method is get accounts and what is the purpose of this method this method returns the list of accounts so here we have account class okay so guys if you look at this method closely you got little bit confused when seeing this method and why is it so because you know that this method is returning a list but you are not able to figure out that which list is this and what are the objects inside of this list so basically the return type of this method is not giving us a clarity that what object is contained in this list so how can we solve this problem to make this uh, return type of this method is more clear and more expressive and more readable so again this is where generics comes into picture so let's use generic let's use the diamond symbol here and now let's write account so now as soon as i write account inside of the diamond bracket you will come to know that this method is finally returning a list of accounts now this return type is looking more readable more clear and more expressive so this is how generic help us in improving the code clarity so that we can write more readable and more maintainable and more expressive code so guys this is the first advantage of generics now let me show you the next advantage of generics so let's clear this piece of code now as you know that java is a static type language so which means before defining any variable first we have to define the type of variable like this let's say int of i is equal to 0 so here we are defining the type of variable and the type of this variable is int right this we already know so because of the static type of nature we cannot add a string into this variable okay if we try to do so it will give us compile time error which means that in java we by default get type safety while defining any variable or parameters in the method right so let's see what is the actual benefit we get using generics so let's call array list and let's try to create a list of objects so let's call array list give it a name al is equal to new array list okay now let's try to add elements to it let's add al dot add 1 okay and let's add al dot so if you closely look at this method this method takes object as argument and why is it so because object is the root class of all the classes in java okay so by default this method is taking object as argument and we have not specified to this array list that you should always take this type of input so that is why it is taking all the inputs which extends object class and all the classes by default extends object class right so now let's say i was expecting that this array list contains only integers but by mistake only someone has added string to it now let's say we have for each function over here okay let's say and this function is and this uh, for each is using iterator okay so let's call l dot iterator iterator dot has next let's give it a name it okay let's Uh, call it dot next has next to check if the next element is exist or not. Then what are we doing? We are processing all the elements of this array list. So let's call system dot out dot print ln and let's call it dot next 
into 2. So we are multiplying all the elements of this array list by 2. Okay. And remember that we are expecting that this array contains only integers. But somehow by mistakenly someone has added a string to it. Now if I run this program then you will see that it is throwing an exception. And this exception is classed cast exception. And why is it so? Because first element works absolutely fine. But as soon as a string comes here, it is trying to convert this string into integer and it is not at all possible to cast a string into integer. That is why it is throwing an exception. Now here is a big problem. How can we avoid these type of errors at compile time? So guys, this is where again generics comes into picture. So if I tell this array list that you should only take input of type integer, then this error would never happen. Let me show you how. So let's use generic. Let's use diamond symbol. And inside of this diamond symbol, let's write integer. So now this array list is bind with the integer type only, which means this array list now will not take any type which is not equal to integer. So you can see that we are taking the advantage of type safety now. Now our compiler is able to detect that we are adding wrong data into this array list. So this is the main advantage we get when we use generics. Okay. Now we cannot add any data whose type is not equal to integer. We will get compile time error. So here basically we are getting two advantages. First one is we are getting the same type feature in the array list. And the second advantage is our compiler now putting a strong type checking while adding any elements into this array list. Okay. So this was the problem and we have fixed this problem using generics. Now let's move on to the third advantage or third benefit that is using generics we can eliminate the unnecessary casting of objects. So let me show you. Let's remove this integer from here. Okay. So what if I do a string of s is equal to l dot get of index 1. So you can see over here is I am getting the element at index 1 and as per our knowledge the element at index 1 is of string type. But why is it giving error? It is because we have not defined the generic type on array list and by default this array list is taking all the elements as object. Right? So in return also it is giving us an object. So as this is giving a return value of object we have to cast this object into a string and then we can easily store that string into this string variable. So this is also a problem when we use a collection classes without generics. So how can we solve this problem with generics? So again let's use the diamond symbol and put here a string. So which means now this array list is strongly bind with the string. So let's delete this one here. So now we no more need to convert the element which we get from index 1 into string. We can simply assign the element that we get from index 1 into the variable of type string. So this is the major advantage we get when we use generics that we can completely eliminate the unnecessary castings of object. So guys I hope this is clear to you. Now in the last if you ask me that why we need generics what can we do with generics then the answer would be guys using generics we as a programmer can write or implement generic algorithms that work on collections of different types. So basically with uh, generics we can write generic algorithms, generic interfaces, generic classes and generic methods so that we can reuse those methods classes interface with different types of data type. We can also customize that we get the type safety feature from compiler and all of that classes interfaces and methods are easier to read and easier to maintain. So guys by now I hope that the concept of generics is clear to you. Now you understood that what is generics, why we need generics, what problem it solves and what are the benefits we get using generics. So this is all from my side for this video. If you learned something valuable from this video then hit the like button in order to make YouTube algorithm happy. Please subscribe to this channel and don't forget to click the bell icon so my friend you never miss any upcoming videos. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.